is it really worth buying the campaigner quality blankets? This week on the 11th OVC, taking a look at some of the different suppliers of blankets. So those of you who've been in the hobby for uh, the, this past year, actually, uh, you'll notice if you follow a lot of the uh, campaigner style uh, vendors that there's kind of been a, a push on supplying good quality blankets to us as the reenactors, the quality uh, quality campaigner reenactors out there. Uh, and one of the things that is, comes up is, is the blanket really worth the money that you're spending on it? So that's what we're going to dive into uh, this episode is looking at three major blankets and of course uh, what the quartermaster says as far as a specifications, which I guess would be the fourth aspect of looking into it, uh, and add that to a fifth uh, example of being an original. So we're going to take a look at three modern reproductions, look at what the quartermaster says should be the specifications, and the actual original, and see which one is quote unquote more authentic, and is it really worth it? So before we get into whether it's actually worth it to buy good quality blankets, the, the really the, in order to answer that question, we have to decide what are you using the blanket for? Is it for uh, living history interpretation? Is it for actual uh, you know reenacting and campaigning for your own enjoyment? Uh, what is it for? And the reason I bring this up is because you hear a lot on where not to skimp in your impression, whether it's your hat or your footwear or your uniform or your weapon. Uh, there's a lot of opinions out there on where not to skimp out on. And if you're a campaigner, if you if if you want to actually uh, go and camp out and actually live the uh, the hard life, so to say, uh, then one of the things that I recommend not skimping out on is your blanket. Having a good quality blanket is paramount and important uh, so you don't get cold at night. As we'll see here in a little bit, the uh, mainstream uh, blankets that are available uh, are not to specifications. They are not designed and made to the specifications that the, or the original quartermasters asked for. And as you'll notice, and those of you who have the mainstream blankets already know, that uh, they're not warm at night. They are not warm at all, and especially being uh, late in the fall, you know, coming on November right now, uh, having a really good quality blanket, if you're going to be sleeping out in this weather, you need to make sure you have good quality blankets. And so, so in order to answer that question of is it worth it or not, really then you have to answer that with another question is are you going to be campaigning or are you going to be doing a li living history interp where you need that close in actual good material that keeps you warm at night. So what we're going to start with is looking at the quartermaster specifications on the blanket and see how they're supposed to be designed. The quartermaster's manual specifies that blankets should be wool and gray with letters U.S. in black, four inches long in the center to be seven feet long and five and a half feet wide and to weigh five pounds, made according to the specifications seen in the textile of fabrics. And as you can see here, under the specification of fabrics, under the very first entry of woolen blanket, you're, you're looking at the uh, threads filling in each square inch, which is 16, uh, each chain inch, which is 16, of course, linear, linear yard weight, uh, bearing strain lengthwise to square inches, uh, and bearing strain crosswise to square inches. Uh, this gives you your actual specifications. Of course, it says again on the right-hand side, to be made of pure, long, staple wool, gray in color, the blanket to be seven feet long and five and a half feet wide and to weigh five pounds threads well driven up and not too much napped. So let's dive into three available reproductions on the market today. So we'll first talk about the Cicala blanket uh, and then the uh, Bristol hollow blanket. And then of course, uh, your standard mainstream blanket you get at any, uh, you know, in any event or any mainstream uh, vendor out there. So now specifically about the uh, Cicala blanket right here. Uh, the Cicala blanket, as we ordered it, uh, came in. Uh, it took a little while, but he was uh, actually uh, getting it made as like uh, actually all these other ones that we uh, ordered. I um, mean, some of these are going on six months to a year uh, after we've ordered them. Uh, but in our, in our industry, in our uh, a hobby, as many of you know, that's kind of normal to, to wait, especially for these special orders, to wait that long. And when it came in, the Cicala blanket arguably was the most authentic. It was 91 and a half inches long, uh, 67 and a half inches wide, and about four and a half pounds when it came in. And one thing to note about this is when you compare the 91 and a half inch length to the uh, original specifications, which were supposed to be 84 inches, 
It's actually about 8% longer than it needs to be. Uh, when you look at the width, the, the Circala blanket was 67 and a half inches long. Uh, compare that to the 66 inches that the uh, Recorder Master's Manual specifies. That is about 2% longer uh, than it needs to be. Again, 2% not that big of a deal. That's pretty good. The one thing that I like about the Cicala blanket that blows all the others out of the water is that it weighs closest to the original five pound requirement more than any other blanket out there. And when it comes to sleeping and having that dense, heavy weave uh, blanket when you're sleeping with it, uh, that, that matters more so than almost anything else out there. And so like I said, it came in at four and a half pounds, Compare that to the five pound requirement that the quartermaster manual says, uh, and that's only about 8% down from where it needs to be. So the next blanket we're gonna talk about, as many of you got on a couple of large group purchases, is the uh, Bristol Hollow Blanket. Now one thing I like about the Bristol Hollow Blanket is they did actually have pretty good dimensions. Uh, the, the weave, as you can see here in these pictures, is actually pretty good. I like the weave on it. Uh, but let's take a look at the actual specifications. The Bristol Hollow Blanket came in at 85 inches long and 57 and a half inches long. And you compare that to the original 84 inches long and the 66 inches inches wide that it was supposed to be, that is actually a difference in 1% on length. But if you take a look at the width, the width was 57 and a half inches, uh, which is about a 12% difference on where the original specification says it needs to be. But here's my problem with, the, uh, with this Bristol Hollow Blanket. It came in at 1.8 pounds. Compare that to the five pound requirement it's supposed to be, uh, then, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not really warm to be sleeping in. Uh, and of course, uh, being the, I guess, what living, what do you call it, living archaeology or well, experiential archaeology that, uh, that is going around now, uh, or has been going around for a while, uh, I, you know, sleeping in these blankets, I've slept in a lot of mainstream blankets. I've slept in this, uh, in the, well, actually, I've slept in all these blankets, and man, that... <laughs> Not just a Bristol Hollow, but these mainstream blankets too, are, they're so cold at night. Uh, very, very cold, and the wind blows right through them, and this is why it's important to have a good quality blanket. Uh, but as far as the dimensions, as far as the weave, really good. Very, very accurate. I, I like how, uh, how it looks for sure. The density, the weight is just not where it needs to be. And of course, we'd be remiss without going to the uh, mainstream blanket that all, you know, all of us start out with probably and thinking that this is a fun blanket. Uh, this is a woolen accurate blanket to sleep in. Uh, and as many of you know in the, uh, the, in the hobby, this is the farthest from uh, authentic as you can get. Again, when, well, let's look at the specifications. And when it comes to this mainstream gray blanket, the, specific the specifications came in at 84 and a half inches long and 64 and a half inches wide, which is actually about half a percent in length difference, which is actually, if you argue, pretty accurate. I mean, when you're talking half, it's exactly almost the length it needs to be as far as the specifications. So that actually is pretty cool when it comes to length. Uh, the width, same thing, it came in at 2% uh, from being where it needs to be, which is actually pretty good. So again, looking at dimensions, not bad, but this is where the mainstream blankets uh, fail in their reproduction. Is that the weave, the weight, and the, the, just the denseness of the blanket is nowhere near where it needs to be. On these cool fall nights, as you can see right here, uh, the wind's coming up, it's lapping against your face, you're trying to pull that blanket over your head, and uh, it's, it's, it just goes right through. And as many of you know, that's, uh, it makes for a very miserable night. If you take a look at the weight of this blanket, this blanket is 2.8 pounds. Now at 2.8 pounds, that's a whole pound more than the uh, Bristol Hollow quality blanket. Uh, but at the same time, the weave is loose and napped, or not napped, but the, the weave is not where it needs to be and it lets that wind through a lot more than even the lighter Bristol Hollow Blanket, uh, which, I mean, you would argue the weight, you, you, how does that make sense? Because the Bristol Hollow Blanket is, is lighter by an entire pound, uh, but because of the weave, you can feel the wind through your mainstream blanket significantly more, at least my experience, than even the Bristol Hollow Blanket and of course the, the Cicala Blanket uh, stands above all. Uh, so when it comes to the specifications, the, uh, you know, the Bristol Hollow Blanket, the main stream blanket as far as the dimensions are actually pretty good uh, but the Cicala blanket comes in why because the weave is right and the weight although it is a little bit longer and some of you are saying ah he's got the extra poundage in there uh, because it's so long I mean it's it's eight percent longer than it needs to be well 
that doesn't that doesn't make up for an entire two pounds uh, of fabric. Uh, and so that's what I like about the Cicada blanket, guys. Uh, and there's some other, I mean, obviously, uh, Child's uh, old, old blankets out there. Some of those are going for ridiculous amounts of money. But also, so are these uh, modern reproductions as well. Buying brand new, you're going to pay that, that amount for them. So when it comes to looking at these blankets and determining what's best for you, you have to kind of ask yourself, what am I going to do? Uh, now, if it's for living history and Terp, and your people are going to be up close looking at what's soldiers had in the, in the day, then I would recommend the Bristol Hollow or the Cicala Blanket because they'll see the, the weave uh, and of course the unfinished hems for, some, for those of you who want that impression. Uh, but keep that in mind too, that where if you're going to do campaigning and you're going to be sleeping in these cold fall nights or the cold spring mornings uh, and you want to actually get some sleep and get up as rested as possible, then I by far I recommend the Cicala blanket because it is the weight it needs to be for the most part. Uh, it is the weave it needs to be. Uh, from a look standpoint, uh, it's, it's definitely uh, it looks right, it feels right, it weighs right, and the wind doesn't go through that near as much as the mainstream blankets or the Bristol Hollow blanket. Now I'm not picking on any specific ones, it's just a, the big blankets that kind of were advertised and, and uh, put forward in our hobby this year. And I wanted to compare them and see what you guys thought about them. Please, if, if you think I'm blowing smoke, comment below. We'd like to see your comments or your experience. Guys, what's your experience with these blankets? What have you found to keep you the, the warmest as far as blankets? Now, we're not getting into all the field craft of how to make your bed and how to sleep and how to fold your blanket. That's a whole other episode on whether we do it or someone else does it, like the Civil War Digital Digest. Uh, that's at a later, later time. But specifically, what's your experience with the blankets, the quality of the blankets, the weight of the blankets, please comment below. So I hope that helps you decide on uh, which blanket is best for you, whether you can just go with the mainstream one because you go with mainstream events and you really don't have to sleep on the ground in the cold, uh, or if you want to go with the Bristol Hollow because the weave and the look and the dimensions, which are awesome, or if you want to go uh, full bore and get the Cicala blanket, which I'm not saying that's the only one out there, but it's the one that we purchased and we tried out, uh, and it is the weight it needs to be for the most part, it is dimensions for the most part needs to be plus or minus about 8%, uh, but most of all, and what I, what I noticed most about the Cicala blanket is that the wind is stopped significantly better than any other blankets out there. So whether you get that one or the other ones, I uh, hope, hope this helped out. Please comment below. Please like us on Facebook. Please ring the bell because apparently notifications don't mean anything anymore. Like us on Facebook. Comment below. And we're happy that you watched us again. So until next time, or if we see you in the field, ride hard.